Okay, so now let's uh, consider a circuit, a simple resistive circuit, where we have, right, we imagine having pull, done some work and, and pulled some charges off one plate and put them on the other and created a potential difference as before, say, of magnitude delta V star. And now we're going to connect those two plates via some wires. Here is <coughs> a wire that connects to a resistor. And then we'll do something similar for a top part going through another resistor. And like that. So, so let's say that there's some current here that flows. Right? There's an electric field that's created and, and, and the charge will, will move from one plate to the other as a result of the electric force. A current will be generated and at this point here the current can break up. And so we have a current that comes through here, let's say I1 and I2, and let's say we have resistance R1 here and R2. So we still have I1 coming through here and I2 coming through here, but when they come out of here, they must produce I, right, by conservation of charge. But our other principle, so well, let's write that down. So conservation of charge requires that I equal to the sum of the currents through the two resistors. <clears throat> Whereas conservation of energy The, the integral around a closed loop, the, or the potential energy difference around the closed loop must be equal to zero, or um, equivalently, the closed loop integral of the electric field must be equal to zero, and that's the potential energy difference. So this gives us that in magnitudes, delta V star is equal to, say Ohm's law is obeyed here, well, we'll, okay, well at this point, let's just say that there's a, a voltage difference delta V2 here in magnitude and delta V1 there in magnitude. And so it must be true that delta V star, right, that's the voltage so we go from here to here, we have delta V star, and then we're going to come all the way back around through resistance, R, uh, the resistor of, of value R2, and back around to the same, to the initial point, and the total voltage difference there needs to be zero, so in magnitude, the voltage across here must be equal to the voltage across there. Right, one is positive, the other one's negative. So we would say delta V2 is equal to delta V star, but the same is true of the voltage delta V1 because you know, I can start here and come and go through here and now have a voltage difference delta V star, but then go all the way up here and go through here, go through resistor with uh, resistance R1 and voltage difference delta V1, come back around. That voltage difference must be zero because that's a closed loop. That's a different closed loop. And so it must also be true that delta V star is equal to, in magnitude, the voltage across resistor R1. And now we assume Ohm's law. Okay, so uh, assume Ohm's law is obeyed. And so uh, we have that uh, the current which is I1 
plus I2 is equal to, by Ohm's law, right, V equals IR. So let's uh, write that here, V equals I times R. So I is equal to, so I is therefore equal to V over R. And so I1 will be equal to delta V1 over R1 plus I2, which is delta V2 over R2. But we know that delta V1 and delta V2 are the same, they're just delta V star. So let's just pull out the delta V star and write this as 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And so what we have is that the current, the total current in the circuit, obeys this relationship. And so voltage equals current times resistance. This is 1 over the resistance. And so we can say that 1 over the, the net resistance of the circuit, in this case, is equal to uh, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And so this is how the resistors add when they are in parallel, meaning that the current can break up. So if we had a, an additional uh, resistor there, it would just be 1 over R3 and so on. And so now we know how to add resistors in parallel.